everything shows. We've, we've, we've made it. This is not brick that I'm just showing to you that, look, this is it. All. I built a house with it. I, I live here myself. Okay, so apart from this one, have you been able to build some for clients and people? Now we have about 12 projects ongoing. Okay. Yes, there are more coming, but I can't accept all of them. Why? Because of capacity issues. You can't. And you know, Ghana, if they sit on the internet and tell you, ah, he, he took my money, he's not able to do it. Mm. But you, you are talking about affordable housing. How affordable is building with your materials or your products? How affordable is it? One bedroom house, fully uh, built, like the interior finishing, plumbing work, floor tiles, door windows, it's 90,000 Ghana City. And we, we are 90, doing... 90,000? Yes, we are doing anything to even bring it down more. When we get to the roofing sheet, we'll be... Okay, so let me understand. Sheet, yeah. One bedroom. Self-contained. Self-contained. Yeah. I don't need to invest in painting or doing anything. No, 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 no. Just like what you're seeing. Oh, so you mean where I am now, it's... It was built with plastic. It was built with plastic. If I don't tell you, 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 you wouldn't believe it. No, but um, on, on the walls, I don't see plastics on the wall. We use POP with other chemicals to do the interior finishing. Okay. Because most Ghanaians don't want the block work design. Okay. If it were to be a UK, they would just leave it or just paint it like that. But most Ghanaians, we don't want that. So we just did this. And the outside, we just left it for people to believe that this is plastics. How safe is it for somebody to live in this room? There is no problem, like I explained earlier on. The, the bricks are made up of only 30% plastics and 70% sand. Okay. You can, it's easy to breathe in, just like our concrete block. Step 1 TV. Captivating experience. Okay, so welcome back to our channel. It's another day on our channel and make sure that you like the videos that we put on our channel. Um, you subscribe to the channel and of course you leave a comment. Today we are going to have a chat with one young man in Ghana here. Not just in Ghana, but um, across Africa. His name is everywhere. He has been able to take plastic waste, put them together and he's building affordable houses for every Ghanaian. Not just Ghanaian, but he's been able to expand to some African countries. Today, my guest on the show is Nelson Wati. Nelson, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Okay, um, plastic waste. I've been to your factory. I've seen the kind of things that you are doing. Um, I don't know, where is the motivation coming from? Uh, I, 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 I would say, um, looking at the tonnage of plastic waste that Ghana mm -hmm. generates annually, according to the UNDP report, we are doing over 1 million tons of plastic waste annually. Wow. And only 5% is recycled. So you can imagine the number of uh, the, the tonnage of plastic waste that we have on the environment, okay. causing the government huge sums of money to get rid of all this plastic waste. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So let's, let's see. How did it all start? Like, how did you start this whole, whole thing? So I started working with plastics at the age of 13. I was already working with one company in Tema. Wow. Which, yeah, which I can't mention their name because it's, <laughs> it's, it's Charlie Baden, but I needed that job to help my parents take care of me and my other siblings. Were your parents away? They were away. 13 years? Yes. What did you tell them? I'm, I'm someone who always loves to help them because okay. we, are, we, are, we are six and anytime they talk, I can see the difficulties in their eyes. So I, I really want to give a help. Okay. And, and by that time, my structure, if I don't tell you my age, you wouldn't believe it. Okay. Yes. So. so 13 years, you just walked into that company and told them you want to work with them. Okay. So my grandma knew the supervisor then at that okay. company. So he, I convinced my grandma that, no, I want to work okay. so that I can help my parents. Because always I can see this difficulty in their eyes. So she introduced me to the supervisor and they asked me to come. The, my, my first day, I was asked to read. To, to ensure, to, for, for them to be very sure that yeah, I can that do that. strong for the work. And because I really wanted that job, I did that. And the next day, they asked me to start work. Okay. But my first day at work was a night shift. Wow. And being a young guy, night shift, I, I was in God. <laughs> was so, it your first time experiencing night my, shift? My first time. Even though I, I was doing some hard work by then, I was 
into uh, block manufacturing. Okay. Yes. So I went there, and when the Chinese guys saw me, they were surprised. Why am I like all, all of it? Yeah. Boy. Yeah. Then they, they want me to. So I narrate my story to them. They said, "Okay, fine." That very night, they said I wouldn't work in that department. That's the recycling department. Okay. They would rather carry me along. Anytime they want to fix machine, do anything, okay. I, I, I will carry the tools with them. So I, I started doing that while I was going to school. Okay. Even two hours, three hours, these Chinese guys will allow me to work two, three hours. Then they will pay me, then I'll go back to school. Wow. So that is how I started the plastics. Okay. So um, from there, what happened? So when I finished senior high school, I went back again to work with them full time. So you were able to combine schooling and that work? Yes. Okay. I went back to them to work again. Now they promote me from a normal worker to a section leader. Wow. Then, whilst I was uh, working with them, I en 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 enrolled myself to NIT, where I did network engineering. Okay. So I'll be working with them. Then, because they've seen something in me, I don't know, they keep on promoting me. Okay. So from section leader to supervisor, and then I became the assistant to the director. Wow. In a new company they okay. established. So I got the experience both on the field, uh, on, in, in the factory and also administration work. Okay. So that is how I started. So, but okay. on, on, unfortunately, 2012, because it was a family business, okay. I think there was some misunderstanding between them. Mm -hmm. So they decided to sell off the company. Okay. But they brought the news that anybody who will be able to bring a potential buyer will have 5% five, five of the total value. Okay, so anybody who is able to get a potential buyer to come and buy the company, company. that person gets 5% commission? Yes. Okay. So fortunately for me, God be my side, I got that deal. So mm -hmm. I brought it. You brought somebody to buy it? Yes. Okay. I got the money. I didn't even spend a dollar. I set up my company. No, let me understand. So you got someone to buy the company? The company. And then you got your 5% commission? Commission. And then? I didn't spend a dollar. I just set up my own company. Would, you, would you want to share with us how much you, you, were, you were giving? Oh, uh, <laughs> by then... <laughs> so you, you started it, mentioning dollars. So I know it's, it's definitely going to be in that. Yeah, yes, yes. Like um, $100,000. It's, it's more than that. One million dollars. Oh no 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 no! <laughs> See, only to, it's a huge amount of money that I can buy a small land, set up small company. Okay. So those that lost their job, I brought some of them with me. So we started Neoplast. Oh, so let me understand you. The commission you had, the five percent you had from, you were able to set up yourself. Yes. And then you employ some of your colleagues to come and work. Yes. So. But, but the Chinese were also good. They gave me some machines to start with. Okay. Yes, so that also helped me. Okay, let me ask you, was the Chinese company also into this plastic um, and blog work or something? Were they also into construction? No, they were doing polybags, those okay. black polybags and the, okay. those, uh, what is it, cocoa rubber or whatever okay. they call it. Yes. Okay. That's what we're doing. Okay. Yeah. But um, why did you decide to um, pick some of these um, uh, plastics and convert them into um, affordable buildings. Well, what was that idea? Okay, so I also started producing the, the, the polybag myself. Okay. 2013. Okay. Then 2015, I think this June, June 3rd disaster mm -hmm. in the circle. Yeah, yeah. The government was trying to say oh, all the problems was channeled to those producing mm -hmm. Uh, was in poly bag. Okay. They wanted to ban the yes. plastic bag manufacturing. Yeah. And me being someone who has been in the plastic industry all my life, I love plastics. And looking at the number of uh, people I'm helping, people I've, I've employed, I can't not let this go like that. So I have to find a way. Because I myself, anytime I hear plastic cause this problem, I feel bad because I know I'm a big contributor to that problem. Okay. So I asked them, what will I do? A product that will not, will not go out to pollute the environment, but rather save the environment. Wow. I so, start, yeah. So I started with burning the plastic in a metallic drum. Okay. But then it was still polluting the environment. Because when you set the fire in the drum, the whole area 
will be full of uh, what smoke. People will come at you. And, and the people were complaining. But fortunately for me, I have experience in building a studios. Okay. That is where I got from my masters. Okay. So I, I, I built my own extruder. Now I don't bend the plastic, I melt them. Okay. I, if, and, and even the plastic, if you, if you bend them for a very long time, they lose their bonding property. Okay. And they will smell for a very long time. Even I have one I tested the first time. It, even if you take it now, it still smells okay. because you bend them. Okay. So I, I built my own extruder with three heating zones. Why the three heating zones? Because we use all kinds of plastic waste. Okay. And these plastic waste have different melting point. So once they all pass through these three heating zones with three different temperatures, it ensures that about 98% of the plastic is well melted and mixed with the sun. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that was how come you decided to um, come up with this uh, kind of um, innovation. So how did it start? Um, did you uh, do any practical or... Did you have the idea of even using it for building? You decide to make sure that you recycle them. Okay, so I started doing the paving blocks. Okay. So through the, the paving block, then that idea of turning the plastic waste again into bricks for building. Because I also come from difficult home. And I know how women out there, those sleeping in, in, yeah. in front of shops, people looking for a job, the youth. So I said, why not? Why can't we use the problem of plastic waste to solve the problem of schools and the trees, housing problem, and create jobs for the youth? Okay. So that is how I started with the building blocks. Okay. And how has the response been ever since you started with it? How are people responding to your products? So, building this one or going to this research cost me a lot of money. Wow. You left Ghana? No, no. Everything is Ghana. You did your research work, everything here in Ghana? Yeah, like I said, I have much experience in building machines. Okay. My masters really taught me how to do those things. Okay. Like, they will tell you, if anything's wrong, well, they will not call anybody else and you will do it. Even if you feel, they will let you do it again. Wow. So, I have this spirit of not giving up until I get it right from okay. my masters, yeah. So um, we, we first built one uh, mold, but we were having challenges with it. Okay. That's the heat in the room, and also in terms of fire, how the bricks will react. Okay, yes, because I was going to ask you that question that's okay, now you are uh, building with um, uh, plastic, and I, I don't know how people can handle heat even in the room. So our bricks are designed in this way. There is a groove in between the bricks, okay. which doesn't allow the heat from outside to get in, and also maintain the temperature in the, room. In, 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 the in the room. And in terms of fire, the bricks are made up of 30 percent plastics and 70 percent sand, which makes it fire retardant. Okay. So in terms of fire, this building will burn just like our concrete. Blocks. Are Ghanaians patronizing your products, the things that you have out there? Are Ghanaians actually uh, patronizing them? So the market has been very, very good. Okay. The response from the public is fantastic. I mean, let, 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 let me put it that way. The problem is us how to meet the demands of our customers. Then do expansion work. That requires money. Like I said, this building, I did it more than seven times. And one mode... This one? Yes. One mode cost me 70,000 Ghana cities to do, to, to build a, a mode. 70,000 Ghana. So you can imagine. Okay. Talking about the mode for the bricks. Right? For the bricks. Okay. And I have to do away of some of my property, like sell them, put them in. I'm somebody, I won't stop until I get it right. I won't stop. So... It has been big headache of me. Okay. So now to expand, I need to do more sales that I will be expanding gradually. But the, the problem now is how we can meet the demand of the, okay. of the customers. Yeah. But with the raw materials, our waste pickers, they are about 98% women. That's 300. I have over 300. Okay. 
Okay. They have the capacity of taking about 20,000 kilos of plastic waste from the environment. Wow. But we can only do 3,000 kilos. So sometimes we have to stop them. Don't bring plastic waste to us. Sometimes they will carry all this plastic waste to our door, to our main gate, and we tell them, take it back. I feel bad, though, because I'm always on media telling them, bring plastic waste to nail plus. And now when they are bringing it, I don't have the capacity. So you can imagine somebody has walked in the sun with his children, they collect plastic, then you tell them to take it back. It means sometimes you are even compelled to even pay them and take it. And those women, you can't tell them, come tomorrow. They need that money to put food on the table. They need that money. The least person is getting 50 Ghana cities. Okay. That's the least. That's those, the one that was not able to collect more plastic that day. But the problem is how to get this, all this plastic waste from them. Even the storage space. So that has been a very big challenge. I don't know whether you've been able to speak to or have government officials notice the kind of work that you are doing. Have they come to you to help you do expansion to be able to employ a lot of people here? I would say they have been, I will mention their name, big, big uh, <laughs> government officials that have been in this building. Okay. The Minister of Housing was here. He has given his promise that the government is embarking on affordable housing. Okay. And they are looking for locally made materials. So they will cheap it. We are hoping for that. And when it comes to promises, we've had a lot of them. But me, as a person, I won't wait. If it comes, fine. If it doesn't come, I'm, I'm doing my, my, my work. Okay. But the most painful aspect of it is that this uh, business, we wrote our business proposal and sent it to 1D1F. Okay. And until now, I don't know why they are not focusing on plastic waste. You've not heard from one district one family. No. And I don't, now I've put my mind aside doing my own thing. Because if I tell you the number of jobs we are creating, not only jobs, we have problem of plastic waste in the country. Yeah. And our president is a co-chair. Yeah. Now, we have a problem of housing. Mm -hmm. We have a problem of schools and the trees. We can use plastic waste that we think is a problem to solve that three problems. Create jobs. If I expand now, I need over 1,000 women to pick plastic for me. Wow. This building, we use 13,400 kilos of plastic waste. Wow. So you can imagine the, 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 the women I will engage to bring plastic waste to me. It means that those waste could have been on our streets. And Street. We, they will choke our guard test and it will cause flooding and all this. That 1 million tons of plastic waste that UNDP did a report on, that we produce annually, we can build over 800 buildings out of it. So if government should contract you to handle one district, one factory, would you be able to deliver with the products that you produce? I can do. And that everything shows. We've, we've, we've made it. This is not bricks that I'm just showing to you that, look, this is it. All. I built a house with it. I live here myself. Okay, so apart from this one, have you been able to build some for clients and people? Now we have about 12 projects ongoing. Okay. Yes, there are more coming, but I can't accept all of them. Why? Because of capacity issues. You can't. And you know, Ghana, if they sit on the internet and tell you, ah, he, he took my money, he's not able to do it. Mm. He, so I'm being very selective. I know this one, I can do it. When I'm done with this, this is the next. So I have my... It means that you have people online. You tell them, okay, hold on. I'll get yes. to you. Wow. Meanwhile, if we, if, if we have this capacity, the number of people I, I, I need to employ, the waste I'm taking from the environment... The government wouldn't spend so much money taking out this plastic waste. It means that if you even get support from the government, you'll be able to go to other regions to set up. That is what we want to do. We want to replicate this in all the regions so that we tackle the problem of plastic waste, school sanitaries, housing, and create employment for the youth. Yeah. The number of people who will be calling any job, sometimes you just tell them no. I feel bad. I feel bad about yeah. it. So for some, I, we, you just don't understand why we have this problem. This is a solution, but we are not scaling up to, to solve the other uh, what's in the problems. We can use the, the plastic that we think is a problem in the city to solve those rural schools that they are 
uh, they are under trees, mm -hmm. on, on, on safe structures. Yeah. We, we, we can do that. Even when you set up a factory in, let's say, uh, Volta region or Ashanti region, you get the women going to bring you the plastics, another form of employment. Employment. Uh, you'll be able to build for them, which is cheaper to help eradicate the plastic waste on our street. Um, but you, you are talking about affordable housing. How affordable is building with your materials or your products? How affordable is it? One bedroom house, fully uh, built, like the interior finishing, plumbing work, floor tiles, door windows, is 90,000 Ghana cities. Oh, you are joking. That's the truth. And we, we are 90, doing... 90,000? Yes, we are doing anything to even bring it down more. When we get to the roofing sheets, we'll be... Okay, so let me understand. Yeah. One bedroom. Self-contained. Self-contained. Yeah. We'll build it on your own land. You need to get the land. Yes. And it will cost you like um, 90,000. 90, yes. Complete everything. Everything. I just move in with my things. Yes. I don't need to invest in painting or doing anything. No, 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 no. Just like what you see. Oh, so you mean where I am now, it's... It was built with plastic. It was built with plastic. If I don't tell you, 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 you wouldn't believe it. No, but um, on, on the walls, I don't see plastics on the wall. We use POP with other chemicals to do the interior finishing. Okay. Because most Ghanaians don't want the block work design. Okay. If it were to be a UK, they would just leave it or just paint it like that. But most Ghanaians, we don't want that. So we just did this. And the outside, we just left it for people to believe that this is plastics. How safe is it for somebody to live in this room? There is no problem. Like I explained earlier on, the, the bricks are made up of only 30% plastics and 70% sand. Okay. You can, it's easy to breathe in just like our concrete block. Um, 90,000. Can we do a story building with um, your uh, plastic bricks? Is it possible? Now we can only do one floor. Only one floor? Yes. Why? Because of our, our corner pillar modes. Okay. Yes, they can only receive one. In the future, we need to redesign it so that it can take two, three. Um, I don't know whether you've had other investments uh, telling you they want to come in. I don't know. Have you been able to, or have you been approached by any investor telling you they want to come in? Okay, so we have investors, we have potential investors coming in, but they are offer. Some of them, their offer is very bad. Some of them, too, we, are in, we are still in talk with them. Have you been able to work outside Ghana for people so far? Nigeria. Okay. Nigeria, yeah. You did it in Nigeria. Yeah. Are Ghanaians actually interested in patronizing your product? They well? are. Even, I'm sure by the time we've done, you'll see the comment, I don't pay costs. No, I don't pay costs. It's too much. The pressure is too much. Even though I've employed two guys to receive calls from me still. The pressure is there. So, um, in oh, how many people have you been able to employ? I mean, the permanent staff you have. We have 64 workers directly, and the indirect workers are over 300. You mean 64 people? 64. We run morning and night shift. Is it, is it difficult paying your bills? Very difficult. Because there are no subsidy mm -hmm. from the government to help. Because we believe we are solving a major problem. We are not in to take out the, 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 the business of concrete producers. We have plastic waste to be a problem. Picking it from the beach is a good thing. But what do you do with it after picking it? Okay. If you have this subsidy, it will even help us reduce the cost of the, of the house that we are building okay. or the paving block. This will allow people to patronize it more. Also, plastic waste will be taken out from our environment. Okay. And we, because the problem is causing now, we are not seeing it. Like we Ghanaians, mm -hmm. they did another report that in 2050, there will be more plastic in the sea than fish. Wow. And we have started experiencing that. I think recently there's a new that the fishermen threw their net and yeah. what, what they got was yeah. more of plastic. This is a yeah. sign. This, this is a sign that we are having now. Okay. So in 2050, there will be more of that. Let me ask you, um, with your um, machines you use uh, at your factory, I don't know whether you bought it from outside. Where You, you bought it from outside, right? There are four components. Okay. One of them, we bring, them, we, we, we bring it from China. Okay. 
That's the hydraulic press. Okay. The rest, we build them here. By who? Myself. You are an engineer as well. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I'm, I'm kind of confused. I want to know where to place you. You design and manufacture those yes. machines yourself. Yes. Where, where from the idea? From my masters. But they never taught you how to use the plastics for uh, bricks. Maybe my school has really upgraded what I, I can do with the little uh, knowledge they show to me. I can upgrade on it. Like, like, I, like I said, we were doing plastic bags. Yeah. But now I'm doing paving block. With just block. With a plastic waste. Should we let people still come to you or you can't meet demand? They can come to me. We will do it. It's, it's a matter of talking to the client that, okay, this is the time. We'll be able to come and do it for you. Okay. Yeah. So if the client is okay. Yes. But yeah. um, let me ask you this. With what you are producing... Can any other mason handle it? It can. This house was built by school children, the, the neighbors around, and myself. I'm not a mason. Okay. I'm not a, it's just like you are fixing what's the, name, uh, the Legos. Okay. When we were kids, we were playing with yeah. the Legos out yeah. to go. It's just like that. Okay, so masons who want to even use your products. They don't need any special training. They need maybe for three days how to cut it. Because okay. you need to cut and redesign the ends mm -hmm. to interlock with each other. Okay. So th that is what we'll be teaching them. Okay. On. Yes. Apart from that, the they, are, they are good to go. Yeah. But can we get your products to buy anywhere apart from coming to the factory? For now, unless you contact us directly. For now. So now that you are unable to meet a lot of the demands going to build for people, can masons and contractors contact you so that they come and take it and go and work? Is it possible? It's very possible. Very okay. possible, yeah. Okay, so share your number with us. I don't know if you want to share. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why not? Okay, so you can reach us on 0241. Okay. 324176. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's repeat the number again. 0241. Uh -huh. 324176. Okay, let's follow you on social media. Is there a way we can follow and see some of the things that you do? On IG, we are Nelplast Echo. Okay. Nelplast underscore Echo. Okay. And on Facebook, Nelplast Ghana Limited. Okay. Okay, so thank you very much, Mr. Nelson. You're Martin, welcome. For speaking to us. And um, we really appreciate it. We would want to one day follow you to a site and then see how you go about things, putting things together. But have you been well recognized in terms of um, awards or by the government or any um, private institution? Okay, so the President of Ghana, His Excellency President Ekufado, okay. gave me an award of $10,000. Okay. And that helped me in building some of my boats. Okay. We also received an award from Guba, Okay. That's the entire. We also receive award from EMY. We also receive award, like so many of them. Like, because even some of them, I don't display them here. Wow. Yeah. It means that it keeps coming. Yes. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, so thank you so much. We came to uh, meet Nelson Boateng, who has been able to transform lives, been able to employ a lot of people using just plastic waste to construct beautiful buildings here in Ghana. His numbers is on the screen. Try and contact him and he's going to sort you out. Thank you so much for watching our video. Like, share, and subscribe. Bye-bye. Step 1 TV. Captivating experience.